Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this Logic Pro 10 video tutorial on chaining together the chord trigger, arpeggiator, and note repeater MIDI effects plugins. Now, one of the things I used to do back in Logic 9 and, and 8, uh, before the MIDI effects plugins uh, were even a thing, was I would use the MIDI uh, environment uh, window to essentially um, chain together different MIDI effects. This is the only way you could do it in Logic 9 and, and previously. You had the arpeggiator, you had the delay line, which is the same thing or similar to the note repeater, uh, and then you had the chord memorizer, which is similar to the chord trigger. Um, now that Logic 10 is around, it's been around for a while, um, you can add these same sorts of effects here on the MIDI effects plugin insert, so that's pretty cool. Um, but one of the things I didn't realize you could do until later on was you can actually um, add, after you add an, a MIDI effect, you can actually add another MIDI effect above or below um, that, uh, that MIDI effect. So you can sort of chain them together the same way I used to do in the environment window. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take something very simple and turn it into something very complex just using uh, those three MIDI effects plugins plus some additional processing like some EQ and, and delay and reverb. So just to start, um, I've got this very simple idea. It's just a four note bass line on C, A flat, F, and B flat. It's basically uh, four notes that are in the key of C minor. Uh, and just a very, very simple uh, kick and snare drum pattern. And it sounds something like this. So very simple. Um, I'm using the bass machine breakdown uh, preset. It's under bass, uh, sub, all, all, bass machine breakdown. Um, I'm also adding a few effects to this to get it to sound the way it does. Um, I'm adding a little bit of EQ just to boost the bass, scoop out the high end a bit. I'm using the tremolo plugin, which is giving it that pulsing sound. I've got the um, the right channel phase at zero, but the overall offset at negative 180, which pushes it off on the offbeat. The symmetry is set to 36. The depth is at 100%. The smoothing's at 74%, and the rate is a quarter note. So before this, it just sounds like regular whole notes. But the tremolo gives it that pulsing sound. It gives it some motion. And then lastly, just for reverb, I'm just using the shimmering plate setting under large spaces, plate reverbs, shimmering plate. All right, so that's the bass. Let's take the fundamental notes of the bass line. Let's hold Option and drag them up on another track. Now, in this track, the only thing I have loaded up is it's another instance of Alchemy, but instead of that bass instrument, it's uh, an instrument called Bad Order. And this is under Leads All, All, All. And one thing we are going to make sure that we do with this, because the note repeater will not work pr uh, correctly if we don't do this, is I'm going to make sure that my um, my voice count is not on one, which basically means we're monophonic. I want to have this a, a polyphonic instrument so the, um, the note uh, repeat plugin works properly. So let's just see what this sounds like by itself. Now one thing I'm going to do is this is going to be sort of like a lead, so I don't want it to be down in the, the C2 range um, like the bass was. And actually the bass is sounding more like it's down in the C1 range because it's, a, um, it's a, a bass synth. So so what I'm going to do, let me turn this off so we don't hear that again. Um, drag over all these, I'm going to hit Shift Option Up. It's going to bump us up an octave. Now let's take some of the high end fizzle out with some EQ. So I use the channel EQ and pull some of the high end out. There we go. So filter the low end as well. So let's start with the, uh, actually the arpeggiator, even though eventually the arpeggiator will not be the first thing in the chain. Let's start with the ar arpeggiator. Um, so I'm going to throw it up there. We are going to use a 16th note pace. Um, let's use the upward motion for now and let's see what this sounds like. So basically all it's doing is it's repeating the note because we don't have 
multiple notes in there and that's what the the uh, chord trigger is eventually going to do for us but first let's let's play with the note length so we click on options go to note length and let's pull this down so each note of the arpeggiation is a little shorter a little more staccato sounding let's also pull up the octave range so we're getting two octaves out of it and let's pull this up to one of the other variations Now you can see there's a, a little bit of like um, like a glitchy noise in there, and that's just because the glide time is up on the synth. So let's pull the glide time down completely, and that should get rid of that. All right, so now let's add the chord trigger before the arpeggiator so that the arpeggiator has a full chord to arpeggiate and not just a single note. So all you do is you hover over the top of the plugin, of the existing plugin, you get this little green, uh, green line, click on it, we'll go to chord trigger. Now, what the chord trigger does is it, is it allows you to assign a specific chord or transposed chord, depending on what mode you're in, to each note on the keyboard or each note in your MIDI sequence. Now, we're going to use the multi-mode, not the single mode, because single mode, if I create a C minor chord on C, all it's going to do is, if I press D, it's just going to play D minor. If I press F, it's going to play F minor. So it transposes that exact same chord shape up or down. We don't want that. We want each chord to be sort of individualized. So the note range that we're working with is C3, because remember we transposed it, is C3, um, A flat 3, F3, and then B flat 3. Those are the notes that we're working with. So what I'm going to do is click on the learn mode, um, click on C. Let's, let's get rid of these. Actually, you can do that by uh, holding option and hitting clear here. There we go. Go back to learn. Click on C, and then we can type in any chord we not we want. So the problem is if I if I type in anything right now, it's going to automatically cause uh, the arpeggiator and the chord trigger plugin to trigger. I don't want that because I don't want to have to talk over it right now. Um, so I'm going to just mute that track just temporarily, and let's uh, let's choose a chord here. Let's go. Uh, the, the chord I want is C minor, so it's C E flat G, but I don't necessarily want it in that inversion in that order. So let's spread the chord out a little bit. Let's do C. G, E flat, and then I'm just going to throw in another note here for color, this D. Let's see what that sounds like. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the next note in the sequence was A flat. It's right here and measures three and four. So for A flat, let's do an A flat down here, A flat up here. It's A flat major chord is what we're going to do. So A flat, C, E flat is the chord. So here's A flat, E flat, and A flat. Let's add C in there. And um, I'll tell you what, let's add like a, a G up here. Let's see what that sounds like. That's kind of cool. Uh, the next chord is F. That's from measure five to six. And that chord, uh, we're going to use F minor, which is F, A flat, C. So let's do F down here, F up here, A flat, C, and I tell you what, let's put this little G in here for color. Let's see what that sounds like. That's cool. And then the last chord uh, was B flat. So let's go to B flat. B flat, uh, let's do use B flat major, which is B flat D F. So it's a B flat F, um, B flat again, and then D. Let's see what that sounds like. Let's actually try B flat minor. Let's see what that sounds like instead. Yeah, I think the, I mean, it sounds cool, but I think in context, context, quarterly, it'll sound better. Let's try substituting the F for a G, and let's see what that sounds like. Nah, we kind of have to use the F, otherwise it doesn't establish itself as the correct chord. Um, let's throw the C up here, maybe, for color. Yeah, let's try that. Um, now, notice that with, I'm going to uh, uncheck learn here. Um, notice that with all four chords... I'm using four notes at a time, and that's just for consistency. I typically like all four of my chords in the arpeggiation to have the same number of notes, uh, just so the rhythm doesn't become skewed. So let's uh, take a listen to this. Let's see what this sounds like, um, just with the alchemy lead in here, with the chord trigger and the arpeggiator.
Cool, that's cool. I just pulled some more of the, the high end out just to, to make it a little softer sounding. Now lastly, let's go to the note repeater. We're gonna add that below the arpeggiator. Essentially what the note repeater does is it's like a MIDI delay. You can add up to 99 repeated notes after your first MIDI note. Now we just want one repeated note. So we want our main note and then a second note right after it. You can also transpose that delay up or down by 24 semitones, which is to up to two octaves. So I'm gonna say, let's transpose this up one octave, which is 12 semitones. Let's pull the velocity ramp down, which lowers the velocity on the echoed or delayed note. And let's see what this sounds like just right now. So it sounds a little weird. Um, and that's because basically the echo notes are coming in on the same, uh, like a division of the arpeggiator. So let's do something faster than the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is at a 16th note. So let's try putting this at a 32nd note. So it's almost like a little glassy echo going up. I tried going down an octave. It sounded okay, but not not really that great. And I pulled the velocity ramp quite a bit down just so it doesn't uh, doesn't seem like it's it's too much. You know, what? I wonder if we took the arpeggiator and made it eighth notes instead of sixteenths. And I wonder if we took the 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 delay and we made it sixteenths instead of eighths. If it wouldn't be so crazy sounding. Let's give that a shot. That's cool. So now let's add some audio uh, effects. Let's add the, under delay, let's add the stereo delay. And let's just sort of limit the range of the left and right channels delay a bit. Uh, let's try the ping pong left uh, routing setting. And let's use an eighth note on the right and then let's use say a, uh, let's do a dotted eighth note on the left. So let's go with that. Let's see what that sounds like. And remember, what we started with just sounded like this. Nothing special whatsoever. So the moral of the story here is sometimes you can take something incredibly simple that's based on something else, it's based on the baseline, and you can create something very complex with it just with a little bit of modulation and just a little bit of effects. So let's listen to the whole thing all at once and see what we've got here. Cool, so that's just uh, chaining up the chord trigger, the arpeggiator, and the note repeater. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out carneymediagroup.com, where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at patreon.com forward slash musictechhelpguy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.